Hello everyone. In the previous video lecture, we saw the observations of Ramachandra and Gunachandra vis a vis the idea of rasa. The most important observation of Ramachandra and Gunachandra in connection with the theory of rasa was that rasa was not always a pleasurable experience. They also pointed out that rasa can have multiple locations. It can be located in the character, the reader or the spectator and finally in the actor as well. The next critic who we are going to see in our discussion of rasa is Vidyathara and the text under consideration is his famous Ekavali. Vidyathara's Ekavali is of particular importance as a text in Sanskrit poetics because he uses the genre of praise poem as a poetic manual. This poetic manual come praise poem is written in praise of a king Narasimha of Utkala for whom he worked as a poet. Ekavali consists of eight chapters. The first chapter deals with Kavya Swarupa or the ontology of Kavya and Kavya Hedu or the purpose of composing a Kavya. The second chapter deals with Vakya or sentence, Vyanjaka or suggester, Aphitha or primary meaning, Lakshana or the secondary meaning and Vyanjana or the suggestive operation. The third chapter focuses on Rasa and the different varieties of Dhvani and the fourth chapter deals with Guni Phuda Vyangya Kavya. The fifth chapter deals with Guna or poetic merit uh, uh, and Ridhi or poetic style and the sixth chapter is an extensive study of doshas or poetic falls. The seventh chapter focuses on Shabdalangaras or the ornaments of sound and the eighth one deals with Arthalangaras or the ornaments of sense. In this class, we are going to primarily focus on the third chapter which deals with the question of Rasa. What is of particular significance in Vidyathara's observations on Rasa is an old controversy that he is revisiting. Now what is that controversy? It is the status of animals in the generation of Rasa. Can animals uh, function as the receptacle of Rasa? Vidyathara opines that when animals function as the characters in a work of art, they can definitely become the receptacles of Rasa. This view is in direct contradiction to the views of the earlier authors who argued that the emotions represented by the animals always result in a semblance of Rasa or Rasa Bhasa. In the case of Rasa Bhasa, a Rasa fails to come into being despite the presence of all the factors otherwise congenial for the production of that Rasa because that Rasa is either inappropriately presented or is directed towards an object that one should not desire. An example of uh, Rasa Bhasa is Ravana's love for Sita. Even though Ravana does everything that one needs to do to express Shringara Rasa, the spectators fail to enjoy Shringara Rasa because Ravana is not supposed to direct his love towards Sita who is another person's wife. While we watch Ravana's love for Sita, we get to see all the Vibhavas, Anubhavas and Vyabhichari Bhavas of Shringara Rasa but Shringara Rasa fails to come into being. Metaphorically speaking, all that we get to see in this context is the mere semblance or shadow of Shringara Rasa. According to literary theoreticians, the noble spectators fail to enjoy an aesthetic emotion or feeling that is indecorously represented. According to the earlier writers, when the animals try to express aesthetic emotions, we will only have the semblance of Rasa, not Rasa per se. In other words, we will see all the Vibhavas, Anubhavas and Vyabhijari Bhavas otherwise required for the production of that particular emotion the animal tries to portray. But the Rasa will not come into being. In other words, animals cannot ever become the receptacles or the locations of Rasa. There are many writers who uphold this view. Kundaga, for example, is of the view that the animals 
lack the necessary apparatus to develop and represent aesthetic emotions. All that they have are mere impulses. So, the same is the opinion of Bhoja, who in his Saraswati Kanthaparana considers the presence of Rasabhasa in the characters of low status, animals, villains, and entities presented in a metaphorical manner as the cause of Rasabhasa. In his introduction to Shringara Prakasha, also, Bhoja denies that an animal can be the locus of Rasa. In Sahitya Darpana, Vishwanatha also holds the same opinion. According to him, the emotion expressed by animals is indeed a cause of the semblance of rasa. But Abhinava Gupta seems to take a different approach to this question. In his Abhinava Bharati, Abhinava Gupta quotes a words from Kalidasa Sabhijnana Shagundala to talk about the Bhayanaka rasa experienced by a deer, as it was chased by King Dushyanta. This means that Abhinava Gupta considers animals as, as the receptacle of aesthetic emotion. The same verse is again quoted by Mammata in his Kavya Prakasha while explaining the aesthetic emotion of the fearful or Bhayanagarasa. The verse goes like this, Behold the deer, owing to the great speed at which it is running, is moving more in the sky than on the earth. With a graceful turn of its neck, it is casting backward glances at the pursuing chariot. Through fear of the falling of the arrow, it has much of its hinder part contracted within the forepart, and it scatters on the path half chewed morsels of grass out of its mouth, gaping with fatigue. According to Mammada, the king's chariot is the Alambana Vipava, and the flight of arrow is the Uddibana Vipava. The Anubhava in this scene is the turning of the neck and running of the deer. The exhaustion, terror, etc., felt by the deer constitute the Sanjari Bhava or Vyabhijari Bhava. Here, the location of the Bhayanaka Rasa is the deer which is running away from the arrow of Dushyanta. After reproducing the relevant section from Ekavali, Raja Chudamani Dikshida also says that if the Kavi Prakasha is not wrong in illustrating Bhayanagarasa with the verse Girva Phanga Piramam etc., describing fear in a deer, it is rasa in birds and animals and not rasa bhasa. Now, Vidyathara, following the observation of Abhinava Gupta and Mammata, declares that animals can indeed be the receptacle of aesthetic emotion or rasa. Vidyathara's observation merits attention in this context. In Ekavali, Vidyathara notes, some assert that in the case of animals, there can only be semblance of rasa, but that position cannot withstand scrutiny, since the aesthetic elements can function in the case of animals too. It is wrong to argue that since animals are devoid of awareness of the foundational factor and other aesthetic elements, they are not an appropriate receptacle of rasa. For some human beings can be equally unaware and we would then be forced to deny that they too can be loci of rasa. Here again, it is the sheer presence of the aesthetic elements that actuates the rasa, not awareness of them as aesthetic elements. So, animals can indeed have rasa. To substantiate his point further, he cites a verse. This is how the verse goes. The cow elephant gave the bull a trunk full of water fragrant with lily pollen. The charvaga bird owned his mate by means of a half-eaten lotus filament. According to Vidyathara, the bull elephant is the alambana vipava that stimulates the stable emotion of desire. The springtime etc. function as the uddipana vipava. The water fragrant with lily pollen is the reaction to the aesthetic emotion of the erotic. In this way, Vidyathara substantiates his point that animals too can function as the locus of rasa.
it is important to note that the view of Vidyathara was later criticized by Singapuvala, who was the king of a small principality in today's Andhra Pradesh. Singapuvala, in his Rasarnava Sudhagara, argues that animals cannot become the receptacle of Rasa. In Rasarnava Sudhagara, Singapuvala's criticism against the view that animals can become receptacle of Rasa is both specific and general. First, he begins by specifically criticizing the example of Shringara Rasa in the case of the bull elephant that Vidyathara cites in Ekavali. According to Singapuvala, it cannot be said that this is, a, this is an instance of Shringara Rasa specifically because it happens in the case of animals. According to Bharata, Shringara can happen only if the Vibhavas are Samujjwala or splendid, Shuchi or pure and Darshaniya or beautiful. None of these things are applicable in the case of animals since the above mentioned qualities come out of certain practices like lathering their bodies with fragrance, proper bathing, decoration with ornaments and so on. So, it is wrong to argue that animals can become the location of Rasa. He also says that the bull elephant can become only the real cause of the real passion of the cow elephant. It cannot become a vipava because something becomes a vipava not because of any properties specific to the species of those vipavas, but because these vipavas are cultured and they execute their expression of emotion with proper discernment of propriety. If you are still confused, I will explain this with the help of an example. Rama is able to produce Shringara Rasa in relation to Sita, not because Rama is a conscious entity, but because he performs his Shringara Rasa in conformity with the propriety of the period. On the other hand, Ravana is not able to produce Shringara Rasa in spite of the fact that Ravana shows all the Anubhavas necessary for the production of Shringara Rasa. Why does this happen? This is because he does not follow the decorum or propriety of the period. The same issue happens in the case of animals who are not cultured and uh, aware of the concerns of decency and propriety. Then how can they invoke Rasa in the readers? According to Singapubhala, it is a well known fact that Absence of propriety will definitely result in rasa bhasa. Since propriety is coming out of a cultured mind and the animals are devoid of it, it is wrong to argue that animals can become the receptacle of rasas. The vibhavas, especially in the case of Shringara rasa, need to be desirable objects because of their noble birth and observation of the rules of propriety so that they are able to elevate the minds of the spectators or readers who actualize the rasa. So, this was uh, a relatively simple section on the idea of rasa. I hope uh, all the points we discussed so far are quite clear to you. Thank you so much.